Well, thank you for joining us today. Absolutely, uh, yes. We're excited to have you for Talks at Google, and uh, we're here to talk about Wisdom of the Crowd. So could you tell us a little bit about who each of you play? We waited all that time for you to say that. <laughs> My 10-year-old niece, Pearl, could have done that. You want to go to like, the hard-hitting questions? Um, no, let's, let's start. Yeah, we'll let's do the heavy up. lifting, and, and here we are. Um, I play a guy named Jeffrey Tanner, who is a uh, tech innovator. And um, he, you're not unlike Steve Jobs. Um, we, we are introduced to him when he's addressing All Sorcerer, which is his company. And he's letting them know that he'll be leaving and uh, to pursue basically who, the killer of his daughter, um, the, the man that's been accused, is wrongfully accused. And um, that's where we are introduced to him. And uh, it's an incredibly, I'll, I'll let Richard jump in and then we'll talk about the premise or whatever. Okay. Uh, I play te uh, Tommy, Detective Tommy Cavanaugh. Uh, I'm an old school cop. Um, I believe that in the old school method of hard work and labor is the way you solve crimes. Um, we're introduced early on in our relationship because I investigated, I was one of the detectives on the case for his daughter's murder. Um, and like the Jeffrey's character, Jeffrey, we kind of disagreed on who we put in jail. Um, so we kind of come, you know, 180. And that's how we start to, that's how we kind of we start the show. Yeah. <clears throat> Had you guys worked together before? No, no, never have. So the important question is, did you Google each other before you started working together? <laughs> I watched Entourage. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah. No, I've, I've loved yeah. Jeremy since back in Say Anything Day. So I've, there you I've go. always, yeah, man, I know all your work. Yeah, and I've, I've, been, I've been, oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> going way back, still in high school. Um, no, and I've, I've seen Richard, you know, he's been doing this thing for as long as I have. And it's just, you know, it's great to work with. Richard's amazing and, and doing his thing, and we have, uh, it's really fun for us to work together for, on many different levels. And, and I think also just the fact that his character is so old school and hasn't necessarily embraced technology, and certainly not in this way. Yes. And I think that our ideologies are so completely different. And the reality is, is that the police, you know, would indeed be leery of a crowd-sourced crime-solving site because it could lead to vigilante behavior or we don't even know. So I, I think that it's a, it's a really, uh, it's a great premise that could actually absolutely exist today. I do appreciate your character, sort of the voice of reason, because as someone who works at a tech company, like, no, yeah. it's not like, it could be like that, but it's not like, we do have people who, you know, kind of try and dial it back when do things are on the verge of insanity. But I'm, I'm curious as to um, how much you, you, how familiar were you with like the Silicon Valley kind of Bay Area scene before you signed on to this? I well, watched the movie. Yeah, <laughs> Steve Jobs. Yes, yeah, Steve Jobs. Jobs. Good yeah. Movie. Very good movie. Um, I different mean, different, different company. <laughs> right. But I saw the Google movie too. There we the go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there, there's so much information available to us now because yeah. It's, it's so incredibly, it's moving at the speed of light and it's important and, you know, I'm a bit of a caveman myself just in terms of technology, so uh, it's fun to learn about all this. And, uh, you know, I don't know the numbers, but I think probably <laughs> this and anti-aging are the fastest growing markets in the world, probably. Wow. Would, would or anti-aging on Google. <laughs> yeah, put them, put them both together. We're slowly merging yes. into one super. Exactly. Um, so would you say that technology doesn't play like a large role in either of your personal lives? I would say that. Yeah? yeah I think Jeremy's role, I, th I think technology plays a bigger role in his life than mine. I'm so, such a caveman. Yeah, I, I am too. <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's just Sorry. from, you know, just not having to rely on it and then when you do you know because it's all about logging the hours and we haven't yeah. so we look like dummies trying yeah. to trying to figure that's stuff it. out does, does I that have make a hard time with my phone <laughs> does that does that make it more challenging though because obviously you do have to learn this kind of like uh, you know different language that we tend to speak up here Not and you don't me. have to yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah you don't. <laughs> so i'm kind of he, learning he just has process. to look perplexed yeah. which which is true it's <laughs> method method acting me. exactly yeah. um, no, but for, for me, yeah, it, it's been really fun to learn this new language and to study it and 
because um, it is a really interesting mix of of having both sides of your brain work at the same time because it, it is indeed technology but it's also artistic so um, you know that's that's really exciting to me and um, you know it's about time that I embrace it anyway so I, I'm loving the journey what, what do you think the biggest change that you've embraced has been uh oh that's a, that's a great question. Hey, look. Um, I don't know, just not having a fear of it, you know, because it can be very intimidating. Um, you know, and I, I, like, my mother, like, she's even worse than I am. Like, she doesn't know how to use call waiting. I mean, that's where my mom is. She, <laughs> she panics. She just, like, will give up if there's another call. <laughs> she just kind of throws the phone away and just <laughs> gives up. So I can help her, and uh, so that's great. Yeah, it's b mostly just kind of like not being intimidated, intimidated by it and making friends with it, embracing it. Because it is the future. The thing that scares me, though, is the whole AI aspect of it. I mean, like, why are we developing artificial intelligence? People, yeah. We haven't even developed our own intelligence. And, <laughs> yeah. and you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, and like we have so many other things to solve, yeah. you know? Um, and I have so many other, I have so many people smarter than me. I don't need like a computer being smarter than me. Yeah, and I look that, at my computer and I'm like, my goodness, this is, you're a genius. And, and where wh that's not going to end well. <laughs> you're, you know what I mean? How could that possibly end yeah. well? We're going to just figure out a way for these uh, machines to think for themselves. Right. Oh, okay, great. Terminator, for right. real. I mean. <laughs> Heard it here. <laughs> we're doomed. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. Enjoy your retirement. I know, right, right. But you're doing yeah. great work. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. We're all good. Um, but it's one of those interesting things that yeah. I think we grapple with here, and I'm sure you know the showrunners and writers grapple with, and then it kind of trickles down to being issues that you guys face. And so, are there particular, aside from AI, maybe things mm -hmm. that you know, the show is covering that you suddenly are finding yourself doing more research into and being like, wait, what's that? Or like, what's the application of this? Or is it more of a, I don't want to know, I don't want to know. Um, for me, it's, it's more of um, just really starting to get into social media. I, I really suck at the whole thing. And, um, and I, have, I have four kids, so I, I spend so much time with them that I have a hard time doing what they do because they're so good at it. Um, so now I'm starting to learn what social media really does. <laughs> a little bit. He's laughing because it's a little bit. Um, so I'm starting to learn how it really functions and how how information is dispersed through uh, social media at such a high level. I just it still it kind of amazes me how it does it. So and so much of it is luck. I mean, yeah. uh, what what blows up and what doesn't, and the yeah. timing of it and all that kind of stuff. Um, is amazing to me because I think there have been a lot of great ideas that haven't taken off because they were before their time or there are many other variables. So, you know, from a business aspect, I think it's also kind of fascinating. So, so not being like super involved in it before this, what makes you want to sign on to a show like this? Because it's, it's so prevalent and current and um, I'd like to hear from you guys, but I think that a site like a platform like this could exist. And it probably already does. Um, um, it probably does, right? It does. It does. Okay, it does. You know, um, and that's why people are gravitating towards this because it's it's completely plausible. Right. Um, and you know, there's an argument to be made on both sides. You know, that you could the whole crowdsourcing idea that you know, I mean, ninety percent of it you can't use, and you pull from ten percent of it. And you know, it's it, but we're we're living by committee anyway. Anytime you look up a restaurant or try to figure out the best way to. To, tr to travel to a place, you know, so, I mean, we're, we're, used, we're already very much using all that stuff, and so, um, and the human aspect of it, I'd like to play a human being, that's exciting to me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that actually has feelings. Yeah, the characters are really rich. Yeah. Uh, also in it. Yeah. Um, what do you think you admire most about your characters? Um, I, you know, it's funny, um, I, the, my character's broken, and he's, and he thinks, he believes that if he finds the killer that his grief and his pain will go away. And of course that's not the case. And I think it's just a very fertile premise because it can lead to any type of behavior uh, on his part. And it's, it's kind of dangerous and he's you know, emotionally available and, um, and we, we're developing this great friendship 
you know, even though you wouldn't see it coming. And um, we have a lot of really good, rich characters that are surrounding us. We were just yeah. talking about this, that like everyone's really great on the show. Yeah. And so you could go into any one of their stories at, at any time. And also we're trying to do something that really it hasn't, outside of The Good Wife, I, I can't think of another case in which you've had a real hybrid like our show. It's not a procedural. Uh, I'm tr I have this through line about trying to find Mia's killer. And yet the, the platform is opening us up to solving other cases. And I've made a deal with the cops that if they give me information, well, I can't. Well, I, well yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're, you're going, I'm going, going to. to I'm going to tell yeah, you too yeah, much that's information. Four, yeah. All right. I have to stop talking. Right. I haven't slept, so I'm going to start confessing things. So, it's going to yeah. be weird Take and awkward. All right. Just so you know. So I noticed. But I think one of the things I love is that Jeremy, you, you realize that Tanner is more dressed up than like any Silicon Valley CEO, right? <laughs> did you not make the case for like sweatpants and a black T-shirt for your wardrobe? Actually, I did for my character. You did. Yeah. <laughs> I would love that. Well, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, you've got everyone from you know the classics like Steve Jobs, where like. Fastbender, all he had to do was put on those dad jeans and a turtleneck. And it was like, somebody nominate this guy, it's genius. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I mean, but then you have the Elon Musks of the world and you know he puts it together well. And so it's a little bit all over the place. So, and you have to understand, he was a guy who was running his platform and was wearing suits and doing that whole thing and now, He's totally driven and and very casual. Um, so you'll see that kind of journey. He, he becomes more casual as it goes on, not caring what he looks like and being totally focused. We know nothing about that here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone looks very comfortable. That's um, good. Did, did you sort of look to the kind of titans of, of this industry for your performance, or was it something that you sort of looked within yourself to shape? Well. You, you've got a guy, like I said, who's, who's pretty broken. And there's, th this isn't modeled after a specific person. Like if I was playing the Elon Musk story, then, you know, um, then that's something very specific. But he's an original creation. So you can look at the Steve Jobs of the world who's, who really believe that the variable to his success was not limiting his thinking and being incredibly creative and not fearing uh, other people, their judgment about his ideas and being able to take all these chances. So I would look at guys like that and go, okay, that's cool. And then you, you help figure out who that guy is. Um, he's been able to walk into rooms and dominate and blah, blah, blah. And you, but that's where I'm coming from. And now I'm broken. So it's it's kind of as an actor, it's it's fun to to play all of those things, and then you know hopefully try to make it original. And Richard, did you uh, did you ask to go on any like police ride-alongs, or did you do kind no, of hands-on, or were you like I'll, I'm just gonna? <laughs> What's enjoy funny some is uh, I, I've played so many law enforcement characters that I uh, I've done so many ride-alongs. It's kind of like okay, I'm you're good. You're over it. I'm, I'm good. good. You're good. I'm good. But you know, I always I I have a lot of officers that are friends of mine, so I just talk to them and, and try to get in the headspace of, okay, how would you embrace somebody who knows nothing about law enforcement, who knows, but thinks he has a platform to help you solve cases, and he's like, we go through that all the time. <laughs> everybody's, a, everybody's a cop. And, and so they, they have a little resentment, but they also need, they also need them. So, because they do have information, that's the only way. It's the same, crowdsourcing happens, it's just, they like to see people's faces. They like to hear it from them and not through media. I think in a weird way, I think the cops hate that they need technology. Right. And I think there are some civilians that hate that they need cops. It's yeah. an interesting duality. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, <laughs> you, you witness that on the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think a lot of us probably feel we could be less dependent on technology. You know, it's, it's certainly a crutch for Ooh, hold on. That's what you guys feel like? Okay, I'm speaking for myself, maybe. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> okay. but, you know, in, like, everyday life, there are times when it's like, I wish I could disconnect. I wish I didn't need my phone near me or something like that. Well, but, I mean, think about it. Think about how tied we are to our phones. Oh, my goodness. You know, we look to it for validation. 
to, um, to guide us to where we're going, to connect us with people. Um, and I, don't, I remember, you know, they've done this research, on, and I don't know the exact amount of time it takes, but you, you rarely find anyone that can go more than five minutes without checking their phone. You know, and then these people check the algorithms of all that and how to keep like giving them little prizes, you know, and suck them in, you know, and it's it's crazy. It's 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 psychological warfare at this point. That's <laughs> you saying that at me. <laughs> you, you, you are evil people. <laughs> uh, but switching gears a little bit. Okay. Do either of you do either of you have, have any hidden talents? Uh oh. I mean I, I, I don't know how hidden it is, but I I I, uh, I play the drums and um, drums. I'm learning how to tap dance. Yeah, I play the drums. I played right, drums since I was eight years old. Yeah, uh, you, I didn't, it was hidden from me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I see you every day. No, I, I love it. I mean, there's no oh. drum kit on okay. set. Otherwise, I'd be I'd be on that thing day and Why night. Why not? You should put one in the office. It's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> no, I, I I love to play the drums, and uh, that's definitely what I would have been doing. Um, and I have a band, and we play when we can, and it's fun. We've I played some fun events. I played the one of uh, Manny Pacquiao's um, victory parties. <laughs> but no one told us that um, the entire audience was flown in from the Philippines. <laughs> so it, it, and they were, <laughs> no one told us I that. And all they wanted was, you know, they're very into karaoke in the Philippines. And we were playing like, you know, um, <laughs> not, not this. soft, you know, <laughs> you know mu we weren't musicians, if you will. <laughs> And so at the end of every song, it looked like a Filipino oil painting. They were just frozen, and there was no response. So it was a, it was a disaster. And then Manny got out there, and they went bananas. And he was singing, sometimes when we touch, the honesty's too much, like that. Um, and I can't sing either, and bless him. But they were going crazy, crazy. <laughs> Okay, enough of that. <laughs> you, he's also dabbling in what else? A little tap dancing. I can't. Uh, and, and stand -up. Oh, stand up comedy. Yeah. <laughs> he get, Richard came. Richard I, came to see me. He was. Yeah. Yeah, he came to see me do some stand up comedy the other night. I, I know. Very now. nice and supportive. Yeah, yeah he was oh, supportive. Man. Yeah, he and came. He's funny. He's. You were surprised. I was surprised. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I came out like, Mike, he's kind of good. <laughs> I was very, very surprised, and he's very, very good. I had a blast. It's like anything else. I, I have a, a huge respect for it, and um, I've been studying it, and I think those guys are incredible that they could just get up there by themselves and transform the space. And I grew up doing improv and whatnot, but, you know, stand-up is different, and so I've just been getting up there and having fun. Yeah. Dabbling. Dabbling, if you will. I play video games, and, um, <laughs> yeah. Is that a talent? I, it, it is for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, I have Wow, my life is, I know how to drive kids around. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Scheduling? Thank you, thank you, but that's right. I, don't, I didn't say that part. Okay. I don't know how to schedule. But um, yeah, my talents are very limited. Uh, sorry. To build, off the, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> to build off that last point, do either of you have a go-to karaoke song? Uh-oh. You know, um, I'm do not. rap. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah? Yeah. That's why I do it. Yep, it's yeah, so it's yeah. five forty six in the morning. <laughs> crack it on in. Now I'm yawning. Wipe the cold from my eyes. Uh, oh, this is multi talented. Yeah, you're really biggie. showcasing biggie. today. No, <laughs> old school. What inspires you? Just sunsets, long walks, Chinese food, <laughs> black and white movies, <laughs> holding hands, uh, Good gratitude. Movies. Good movies. Dude. Just hashtag blessed. <laughs> See, you put the internet thing down pat. You put it down pat. That actually is my hashtag. Uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is my hashtag. Uh, it's, uh, oh my God. Uh, Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, what, what inspires us? What inspires, inspires you? Inspires us. Um, Mountaintops. I actually do like mountains. See, I like nature. See, look at that. Yeah. Make it yeah. fun of me. I like, I like the strength that it embodies. Yeah, that's right. So I like mountains, big mountains. Yeah. What frustrates you? Um, Long hours. <laughs> I just when when people, I, I I love collaborating, and when people aren't into collaboration or at least attempting to 
when they feel like their way is the only way, you know, I just like to have my day in court and just to kind of like, when you're being creative, just throw stuff in there and then whatever is, you know, the best idea wins and that should always be the case, no matter where it comes from. And when people are kind of limited in their thinking, that's, that's a problem with me. You've, you've led into my next question, which is okay. living or dead, who's someone you'd like to collaborate with? Wow. You're these are, now these are really good questions. Yeah. <laughs> you went living from nothing dead. to everything. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to save it. Living or dead. Living or dead. Ooh. I think someone like, I mean, Stanley Kubrick, who's no longer alive, is, is a genius, obviously. Um, Charlie Chaplin, Marlon Brando. Carrot Top. <laughs> <laughs> Carrot Top was a genius. Why are you laughing? What? Like <laughs> <laughs> what? He's, he's, he's uh, in Vegas right now. May still around? He is? Yes. Damn. Yeah, he's playing tonight. We can go catch him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to take a few quick audience questions if anyone wants to head back to the microphone. Um, and in the interim, uh, what's one of the best pieces of advice you've been given? Best pieces of advice? Um, uh, recently, um, yes, okay. I was about to go on stage mm -hmm. and do some stand-up, and uh, Kevin Nealon, who is just a great old-school, brilliant stand-up, um, just said, you know, take your time, breathe, and let the audience come to you, you know, because, you know, I'm so excited, I want to, like, bring it to them, right, right, right. show them I got it, you know, and it's like, no, no, let them come to you, and it just... You saw it worked. Oh, yeah. It really oh, oh, worked. Was that night? Nice? Yeah. Oh, it did work. It works. It, it totally worked. That was a, a really nice piece of advice. Um, you know, um, I'm a very big Christian, so the advice I was given a long time ago was always be passionate about Jesus and understand that your your profession, which is acting, that it, it shouldn't be your passion, it should be your profession. But you're always passionate about who you work for, because I work for him. That's it. So look how deep on you, see? I mean, Matt. It's like multi layered. It's <laughs> and he's working with a Jew. Imagine that. <laughs> That's my favorite part. But, you know, Jesus was a Jew, so know, we're, we're all. We're hey, you know, the Holy Days is coming up. That's, yeah, see, look. Like, uh -huh. Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Yeah, so it's tomorrow. That's right. The time, so. There you go. I got a little double part question. The first part is. Uh, there was another show that came out last year called APB with Justin Kirk and Eddie Hudson. Very similar, tech giant, inventor, has an app, solves crimes, avenging mm -hmm. his loved Never one who died. Never nope. saw it. <laughs> nope. Anyway, any similarity between that show and your show? And do you guys film in San Francisco or just pretend to film in San Francisco? Mm -hmm. I'll uh, take the second part first. <laughs> second part first. Two we pretend to film in San Francisco. Yeah. And Oakland, no. Yeah, we. Uh, for two very leading questions, and I appreciate that because I love a challenge. Um, I've never seen or heard of APB, but I bless them because, listen, man, you know, anytime you do a show, it's difficult. Like we we were up against thirty other pilots at yeah. CBS, and we got lucky and we got picked. And now we're on on Sunday nights after sixty minutes, and Oprah's joining sixty minutes. So <laughs> that. that's, that's, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, APB, someone. I, I, I should put an APB yeah. out on APB. Because we actually no longer get around. this question, but we actually never saw the show. So. It could have been yeah. canceled. I don't uh, know. Did, oh, did it get canceled? I don't, I don't know. I oh, saw okay. it last year. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't the rumor know. is it's, it's not. There's a search engine you can use to look no. up the answer to this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but anyone who is upset about that, they can just tune into our show because I yeah. think it's going to be a little more. Good solution. I, I think <laughs> that was something about he literally took over a police station himself. Correct. So, I mean, it was technologically driven, but they're completely different. Yeah. And this whole relationship, it's a whole, it's a whole other show. There will be no copyright infringement yeah. uh, enforced at all. And we shoot in LA, um, um, and it, it takes place in San Francisco and Oakland. And um, we shot the pilot in Vancouver, and you know that's the way it goes. Yeah. I'd love to shoot here. It's amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. I think yeah. you guys are too expensive. Yeah, <laughs> we hope you're on for another ten years, solid, and becomes one of those great shows. Thank, well, you, thank you, sir. You. I appreciate thank it. You. So, how do you do? You see the show as a vehicle to explore, like, 
uh, sort of the relationship between the two characters and the technology piece, right? Because your character plays someone who represents a large portion of, you know, CBS is regular viewers in mm -hmm. the United States, and your character represents sort of this area and like the embrace of technology. How, how do you see that playing out with the rest of the show? Uh, it's a great question. I think that's part of this incredibly fertile premise because he's completely on the fence about, about you know, because, yeah, because uh, this is the wild, wild west, you know, technology to him, and he doesn't understand it. And yet, there's so, so much access to so much information. Um, and so I think that it, it would be great, and I don't want to, this would be great if Ted was here, yeah. our creator, and I'm going to have to just speak, I won't speak for him, I'll just speak for myself because sure. that's all I can do. Sure. Um, I hope that, that we explore all the dangers that it could present. You know what I mean? Because um, between my character, who I think is obsessed with finding this killer, and that could lead to some, some interesting behavior. Mm -hmm. um, and so that premise alone, like we're, we're you know, becoming friends where in the beginning we weren't at all. You know? um, but I, I value the way he's a, he's a straight shooter, um, and I could tell he's a real human being that would be accessible to doing the right thing. So, uh, you know, to answer that question, I think that, um, listen, vigilante behavior uh, we, is already, you know, it's already happened. We see it all the time. Um, and so it could lead to that, and it, and it already has led to some solving some cases. So I think it, it, can, it can go either way. It's a very fertile premise. But yeah, to bridge those two gaps, I think that ultimately would be uh, a desired outcome from, uh, oh, I, I would think, you know. We'll, like we said, we can't really speak for the creator, okay. but. But it's also, it's also really scary because um, in the pilot, you see it being used for the highest purpose. Right. Um, and there are the, you know, celebrities are under surveillance. That's what it is. I mean, call it what it is. You know, um, TMZs of the world are, are hunting you down for their own profit and gain. And now we're talking about people doing it for the right reasons. And that's pretty cool, I think. And as you can see in the pilot, um, that everyone's kind of following this sexual predator, and they bring him down, all of them, by by, you know, videotaping him and everyone kind of crowds around him. And I think it's exhilarating and also scary. Yeah. So I think that could make for some good TV. I, I do think one of the important parts, though, is that it also broaches the topic of like, what happens when that goes wrong? What happens when that's misused? You know, that's right. we have right. to realize right. there are consequences to actions, um, you know. That's right. Absolutely. Actions yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's. And then we're also putting other people in danger if they, if people. Sure. Do it the wrong oh, way, so it's a, it's a it's a <laughs> uh, it's a complicated. Uh, what comedy store did you go up at? The, com or what, the, the comedy store or at the uh, improv. improv. You saw me at the improv, improv. improv, and I do the Laugh Factory Comedy Store, yeah, and I get I just throw myself up there in the middle of um, <laughs> you know, like you know, like, seasoned professionals. Like seasoned yeah. professionals. He was like in between like season. I was like, oh no, Jeremy, don't do this. Yeah. yeah, that's why I was nervous for him. Cause I was like, wait, I'm like, Dane Cook's up here, like a lot of yeah, big stars you know, are up here. You're like, oh, jo and then Joe Rogan and yeah. and and and, uh, and, uh, and uh, all these guys that are really have just honed their craft and are really great with. And I just figured, if I, if I could put myself in that mix, um, and I can still kind of survive, then I might be all right. But also, I love I love the stakes of all that, um, and so. Oh it's it's just been a real learning experience, and you, I just got to keep logging the hours, and I'm having a really great time, and I take it seriously, and that's the only way you could survive in an arena like that. Like you can't just get up there and wing it, yeah. you know. <laughs> no. All right, so I think we have time for the last question, okay. which is, uh, what if you could go back and tell your younger self one piece, one thing, what would it be? Mm. Wow, now we're getting really deep, I'm huh? I'm wow. You can. Uh, you can. Uh, you want me to leave with the, that? You can, uh, yeah, we could have prepared you know, for these <laughs> questions. Um, 
If I could go back and tell my younger self something. <sighs> you know, it's weird because I was such a class clown and it somehow paid off. You know, it's <laughs> yeah, weird. I would have just, it's it like did. there's a part of me that goes, you know, because Keep one of my that? teachers, you know, in high school was just like, you know, Jeremy, if you don't straighten up and fly right, you will be nothing, you know, and um, it was a disaster. <laughs> I don't even know what accent that was. I was so random yeah. and vague. Um, it was supposed to be Indian, and it wasn't. It was a disaster. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I have been, I've been on the stage since I was a child and, and loving it and having a great time. And, you know, there are a lot of subjects that I wasn't good at. And, um, but, you know, just in terms of we were talking about a little bit of organization and stuff like that, and I really, you know, I wish that I knew Spanish. You know, I was terrible. <laughs> and, and now, you know, the, just being able to communicate when you travel is yeah. like, you take that for granted as you're growing up, but it'd be so great to be in these cultures and actually be communicating with people, speaking Italian, whatever. Um, I just, so in, in that way, I kind of feel like a dummy. I wah, 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 wah. I would have told myself to pay more attention in math and science <laughs> so I could have created something like Google. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you create art. <laughs> yeah, I would have been like, yeah, if Google ever comes, <laughs> if you ever hear a thing called Google, invest. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care what you have, sell it all. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much. Congrats thank on you. the show. Thank Enjoy you guys. Thank you. thank you for watching, guys. Thank you.